Hey, everybody. Welcome to Banner and Chance. Great to have you here again. Wonderful to be surrounded by these four fine people. Can't wait to have Rogar back. That'll be a lot of fun when we, when we, go, when we uh, meet next time. Um, we're going to get right into it because we've got a lot to do. We are right on the edge of some pretty big haps for this team. Before we do, we're going to go quickly around the room. Noel, why don't you kick us off? Uh, what's going on, guys? Uh, I play Wolfgang Greyrook, the Shatterkai Ink Bard Rogue. And Becca. Hi, guys. I'm Becca. I play Alphabee's Greyrook, the uh, Shatterkai Twilight Cleric. If I can speak to me. Lady Luna. Hi, Kumbamba. My name is Luna, and I play Gein. She is a Kansai monk. And in the shade, our man with many faces. Shady, and I play Runt, and she is a young human rogue. Our four players here will be commanding uh, a four slightly larger. We have a four children uh, warriors with us, uh, as well as one that's a little unhinged. Uh, and of course, we have our dragonborn paladin, who will be played as an NPC tonight, and our two... Other party members, Bill Korn, the gnome barber, and Griffero, the paladin of Chantia. Uh, and so, four furbolds. And four furbold. What's uh, left of them? Yeah, furbolds. Skeleton, <laughs> skeleton um, helpers, maybe, yeah. if they decide to stick with Did them. we ever clarify we'll how, how tall those skeletons were? Well, furbolds are seven medium. Feet. Yeah, seven, eight feet. Seven, they're seven, sort okay. of giant so kind. They're... They're for bulk size, not like larger than for bulk size. Okay. Well, so <laughs> to clarify, they are slightly larger than for bulk size. Okay. And the children like that you feet. are with are slightly larger than average children's size. Um, you're not exactly sure why, but they are all fairly large individuals. And each okay, of was... you can can hardly hardly notice, but notice that you're all gaining slightly in height as you're here. No, not actually, but... Uh. Um, I, I was imagining they were like twenty feet high for some reason. No, they're not like foothill giants or something. They're they're okay. They are giant kind. Um, uh, but right now, they four of them are wedged in a in a in a uh, crevice in the rock. So let's talk a little bit about what happened last time on Banner and Chance. Our party finds itself on the island of Bertha. This island that they have fallen. Uh, followed this marauder group that had stolen children 
and brought along 30 silver mirrors. And now these children and the mirrors are in the middle of the island, at the center of a hag's coven, in the middle of a, ke a keep that's been constructed and hollowed out from a large termite mound. This island is mysterious. It's been used for centuries as part of lunar festivals, originally under the guard of a uh, group of druids that worshipped a an aspect of the fey aspect of Salune, uh, Moonbow. And so something had happened. This island had been twisted evil, and now there's this hag's coven. This hag's coven has made it their business to undergo some dark magic that destroys children and somehow uh, creates this magical mirror. We're not quite sure what that does yet. Last time, our, our party had adventured around the island. They had found interesting artifacts. A ship's wheel that seems to have no ship. Uh, previously, they'd found this font with this miraculous water spilling forth. And that's where we find our party now. They had left the cave of the children. They had traveled up a now familiar route on a stone boat, this large canoe that ferried all of them in one go, guided by the will of Althabes, Ray Rook. They pulled up next to the island and the various people have uh, the various adventurers and, and our party have now disembarked. Some of them are on the island itself. Some of them are, are on the surrounding bank. Standing in front of them that are uh, separating them from the hag's coven and the boneyard of death. And now this growing mound of bones that skeletal warriors have begun to amass. And you can hardly see just the tops of the, the hag's coven now. And we can't see the moon from where we are. The spires of this rocky, small island are all around us. But we know it's coming up because we saw it while we were on the other side of the island. But here it's still out of sight. Althabes, where do we find you standing? I will be next to the fountain, um, performing the full moon ritual of Salune. We will pick that up in a moment. Gein, where do we find you standing? Well, the first thing that I do as soon as we get into the fountain is I kind of wanted to, to jump across and go into the cavern where the murals were. Okay. And pull out my lotus stone and see if something happens in. All right, that's where you will be. Um, or I will talk you through that in just a moment. Rook, where do we find you standing? Uh, I'm sitting in the rib cage of one of the, uh, bone, um... <laughs> like a mech, you're, a perch. you're, yeah, you're, you're yeah. perched on, sitting on its pelvis. Keep Wonderful my picture. eye on these three lovely looking ladies. Wonderful, there, wonderful okay. picture. And, and one of the children attempted to join you, but he was, he was manhandled down from, um, taken down from Rogar, who now sits at the back of this formation and is standing actually at the back a gap where you had gone through Gein and he's trying to corral these children and and we we have Tweet and Bark and Buzz and we, we don't have who did we lose? Oh we lost Buzz. We, we have Buzz. Hoot. We lost Buzz, yeah. We've lost Buzz and we and we lost um, Mer um Mercy. Mercy. Swish. Swish, yeah. Runt, where are you standing while we while we see this? He under the Hi. bed. Yeah, oh, you're under the bed. Stashed. Yes, oh. you are in the middle of the hag's coven, and you are uh, not under the bed, but on a. I was on a table, table, like yeah, kind of every once in a while, kicking away at these terrible, these yeah. terrible uh, uh, soul larvae that are gathering around your feet, and you're listening Peaking. as the the hags begin to call up one of the children onto the this the uh, this platform next to their their cauldron. So this is where we find ourselves. And we, and there is about to be a whole bunch of mayhem going down. So see if you can catch up. This time, as we try to free these children, episode 27 of Banner and Chance, Freeness Envy. 
Took us how many episodes <laughs> to finally get here? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. Gein, you are squeezing through these uh... rocks and you're finding your way towards the the cavern, uh, the shallow um, uh, altar spot of, of the moon maiden and the story of this island. What I will say is as you were close to the island, the lotus stone you are so intent on feeling, which again felt as though it was about to erupt and, and begin the ritual. As you move away from the isle, uh, from from that position and head through the rocks, that stone begins to go normal again, warm again. Uh, it seems to be losing some of its juice. Okay. All right, then I'll just go back to the island and... Every step you take towards that island, you see, you, you get this sense that this stone is, is active. On top of that, um, I would just like to ask, what do we see Luna doing? What are You're holding the stone, you're wearing your bracers. What else do we see? Um, I mean, I'm just going to be holding it out in my hands like this as I'm walking closer Okay, towards... your hands are out in front of you. Great. Yeah. Bees, you are in the middle of beginning this ritual. What do we hear all the bees, Grey Rogue, say? Um... Um, she will be chanting an elvish praying to Selene for guidance and all of that jazz. Go ahead and give it to me. <laughs> That's right. Bust out pull, the- pull a Brad. Pull a Brad. Yeah, out of nowhere. And and under and and I will just say. The DM is paying attention. <laughs> Remember your jazz hands. <laughs> yes. Jazz hands. Okay. Um, so for those that don't know, this ritual um, is for female clerics only. And she will be offering up milk as the sacrificial portion of the ritual. And she'll close her eyes and say, Sune. I know that I'm very new to this, but we have children who are in danger, and I need guidance to help them and make sure that they are safe and that we can return them to their families. The sounds around you go silent. continue. Just as you once helped me out of the grasp of Carathor, I ask that you help us help them out of the grasp of Carathor and bring them home. Luna, the stone in your hand begins to feel cold and clammy. Your bracers begin to, Gein's bracers begin to tingle and then rise from her skin and glow white. You can feel the bow on your back, its string across your chest begin to hum and also emit a silvery light. Rook, the vines on your chest begin to dance. Bees continue. ask that you look over all of us as we go to fight the evil that is on this island and restore it to the good that it once was. Where are you standing, Gein? Um, I mean, if the cavern hallway is not that close, then I'm probably already make it to the entrance. So are you, at the, are you on the shore or are you on the platform? Um, I mean, if it's an easy walk to go across the water onto the, the fountain area, yep. then... It's five, six feet. Yeah. You pad lightly down on the ground, drawn there by this stone. Bees, what happens with the milk that you have in your possession? 
Your hands are now positioned above the, the water. If what do you do Lune next? If offer, accepts the offer and the bowl start glowing. And this is the bowl of wa- the font? No, the bowl of milk. Okay. A small bowl with the milk in it. All right, so you have it suspended over the, over the font. Mm-hmm. You see it start to glow slightly. What do you do next? I close my eyes and wait. <laughs> You feel your hands drawn towards the water. I'll put my hands towards the water. Lowering the bowl into the water, mm-hmm. the font's waters rush into it slightly. The entire bowl glows, and for a moment, its round surface, its round surface of the water goes white with the milk, perfectly reflecting the moon that you can see now starting to rise overhead. The, the white rock, the alabaster on which you're standing, begins to glow brightly. It's as though you're standing on a lit floor. Luna, your bracers... Mm. Um, thank you. Gein, your bracers glow brighter than you've ever seen them glow. And the lotus flower in your, in your grasp seems to... Uh, dance and and almost vibrate like it never has before, and it, it feels as though it's it's just uh, going to burst or something. Bees, your amulet glows. Everything moon related here is is lighting up. The light is casting shadows through the 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 legs of these warrior skeletons uh, the, the, the furbolgs and they are and the light of the island is striking the pile of rock uh, bones that's there one sorry skeleton, skeleton warrior uh, who is on your side of this bears it's like a moonbeam shoots from him and he kind of goes and you can hear him kind of drop to one knee and then and, and then sort of start to crawl out of its light like this. You're watching this. Yep, go ahead. That position until something happens. Oh, stuff is happening. Or things uh, stop glowing, just, I'm sorry. It's, until things nothing happen. is stopping to glow. It's not, it's not stop glowing. You are sitting on uh, a battery at this point. You are feeling like there is nothing but energy down below you. Okay. What would you like to meditate on? Uh, just focusing on the bowl and the. Moon. You can see that uh, the rest of you can see that Rogar has dropped to a knee. He is keeping these four children close in his grasp, but his head is bowed. Bilcorum is behind him at his side. Reluctantly, Griffero also drops to a knee. I'd like the rest of you to tell me where you're looking, what you're doing. Start with you, Rook. Um, I would get out of where I was hanging from the rib bone and go uh, stand on, or, or sort of straddle the shoulders of the fur bog bone thing. Okay. Um, one of the ones with the weapon? Three has weapons, one has none. Uh, the one with none. And um, I will see if I can just like climb up a little bit, straddle it, so one foot on each shoulder. And I got my hands out, and I got my head looking dex up check. at the uh, the. Okay, dex check. like a client like acrobatics yep. or Go ahead. yeah. Okay. okay, that's not bad. Plus nine with proficiency and expertise. Oh yeah, totally fine. Eleven plus nine, twenty, dirty twenty. Yep. You go ahead um, and you climb, and you notice a hand of one of these giants keeping sort of spotting you as you go up and then seeing you safely to your perch. And, uh, yeah, I'll uh, stick my hands out and uh, look up at the uh, uh, full moon and you'll just hear Rook say in um, in Celestial again, he'll say, uh, where is my little thing drink here? Sorry, sorry. I've got like a whole thing that I made up. There it is. 
Uh, he'll he'll say celestial moon mother keep me safe, um, and then he'll look he'll look up and say that. Then he'll look down where it's sort of like black and like it's kind of darker in the area, and then he'll say I shall take more trophies for you, and then he'll look straight back at the hags, and if anyone sees him, he he has like a serious look about him, but then when he's like looking at the hags, it turns into this like big kind of like maniacal smile, and he's gonna like pull a pull his. Uh, the sword out from behind where the where it is in the loot and just kind of point it straight at where, where we're going down the hags. Sure. You hear this prayer as clear as day as if it was said into your ear, bees. B. Uh, Runt, where do we find you? Uh, well, um, are the kids are approaching? Does it feel like things are starting? This feels like everything's about to pop. Okay. Um, is there anything in the room that looks like it could cause a huge ruckus when things start to happen? Could I make um, some sort of distraction? Not immediately. Uh, it, there's basically just, it's a kind of a scattered room with lots of beds and whatnot. Okay. What you do notice, though, I will say, is that a purple light has begun to surround, is, is now peeking through the curtain like a electric purple almost like a black light right can I peek through the curtain to see what this thing is Mm -hmm. you can see that the roof where it opens above the cauldron this large circle when you look up through that and you kind of try to grasp skylight Mm -hmm. you see this strange black purple light that's now you know casting down on the hags and they're wreathed in this and the the cauldron that was filled with the fat and 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 uh you know rendered meat of children is now glowing a sickly type of uh purple with this green swirl that seems to sort of erupt in bubbles and whatnot and things are going on there the child has now is now fully in front of Lady Bertha, and she says to it, "Gaze into the mirror and say your name. Gaze into the mirror and say your name, Alice Honeyfield." And the mirror comes up. Geen, back at the island, your features are lit from below, standing on this white light. You hold in your hand a black onyx of your homeland. A I'm lotus just, flower. I'm just holding it and with respect to um, B's ritual, ritual, I'm just in my mind just calling out in Kozakuran to my mentor and just say like, where are you? I need you. Just cu- hoping that maybe something happens. But I'm going to do it in my head because I don't want to say it out loud since she's doing the ritual. Understood. Bees, where are you at in your ritual? Uh, the meditation portion. In your mind, a silvery smooth voice says to you, You are worthy. Your quest is worthy. Hold your ground and fight. A strange tingling comes up your legs, through your pelvis, up your abdomen, across your chest and through your shoulders and to the very tips of your fingers. And you can feel as though every hair on your body is alive. You feel as though you are the color of this of this this island. And you feel among everything else a tremendous sense of connection to this ground, to this shard, and to your power. And you have never felt this before. At the same time, Gein, the lotus rattles, splits in two. Oh, God. Dissolves. And immediately a cloud appears next to this this haze 
this vision appears next to Runt. You hear a screaming. Next to Runt? Next to Runt. Huh. You turn and Runt, what you see is you see this, this, this type of portal open, this window where you've seen Goro, and you feel Goro's spirit for a moment, Gein, and you see him step into frame. And he says, it's not time. Gein! What's happening? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Um, I just called out to you. I don't know. Please! Explain! We're on an island to a moon goddess, and this stone... It... It... Just... just, I felt some power, and I thought maybe I could talk to you again, and it broke. The stone crumbles to dust in your hand. The platform begins to rise and for a moment it it glows bright white Althabes you're barely aware of this other than a surge of power you see Goro kind of scattering looking around himself the mists around him begin to glow bright white Mom away help me Mom away what do I do crackling energy erupts from this cloud. Runt, this is right in front of you. And immediately the cloud glows white, kind of crackles for a moment, and then it's as if the entire thing sucks in on itself and then explodes. And and dust is scattered everywhere, and pebbles are scattered everywhere, and the whole cavern in which you are shake, and the, and the, the water parts for a moment. The stone is now gone. It's dust in your hand as if it's ash. Everyone, your eyes are obscured with the exception of UB, who still has her eyes closed. And the light fades for a moment. The light of the island is still there, but the strange crackling energy is gone. Runt, you're the first to see against the edge of the rock that's directly opposing you on one side of this, farthest away from the stones. In the room? Not in the room. Right now, we are all around the island. Runt's not with us. Runt's not with us. Oh, yeah. shit, shit, shit. Ah! Everybody drink. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had in my head you were there. Rogar sees this. Pardon right. me. Off to the side of you, Gein. Man, I really ruined the moment. Ah, it was great. It's fine. It's great. And <laughs> so this mist falls, and Rogar and Rook and Gein Yusi collapsed against the side of the stone. A strange humanoid form covered in fur <gasps> with the face of a red panda or dog, kind of a raccoon. It's a. It's a- it's like a raccoon dog, yeah. Raccoon yeah, yeah. dog, and it's 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 covered. Its arm is covered, and it's collapsed, and appears um, broken against the the rock, and down slumped again one 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 corner. I rush to it. Mm-hmm. I touch it. I try to look at its face, and I just start speaking in Kozaku. Are you okay? What happened? I'm not supposed to be here. No, you're and, not. And then uh, it falls unconscious. I am just going to start shaking it and just calling out, Koro-san, Okinasai, wake up. Okay. Bees. Something, some surge in the fabric of, of the moon has just has just occurred. You open your eyes. This tremendous power is is coursing through your body. It's at that time, Runt, and I'm in the right place now, hiding behind the curtain, <laughs> yes. standing on this table, the maggots around you seeming to have forgotten about you and milling around. You see the child say her name. 
look into the mirror and collapse. And as she collapses, Nanny Bertha's hand snaps out, captures the mirror, hands it to candles, uh, candle teeth. She, Nanny can, the anti candle teeth takes it. She puts it in a box. Dirty grinder comes, grabs the, the, the body of this child by the neck, slings it as though it's a back bag of meat over her shoulder by the neck, takes it over to a table and throws it down and it lands with a heavy thud. The Oni joins her at the table and says, Give us just a snack there, Gertie. And Gertie withdraws a large hatch, a large um, cleaver. The rest of you suddenly feel as though something cold washes over you. R- Rook, you see above the hag's uh, um, keep the cloud, the crackling purple cloud has now changed into a floating crystalline disc like a lens and it's hanging there and the first rays of the moon are heading straight down the hole being focused by this disc and casting a purple light down into the 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 opening and Runt you hear Nanny Bertha say Let's get this done, girls. Who's next? And little Lem Trimble, the young boy that you've met, met, uh, met on the on the boat, um, stands up. All of nine, eight, nine years old. Okay. Here we are. Um, can I, um, how far away is this from me? What's happening? You are roughly 12 to 15 feet away from the edge of this, uh, this happening. It's sort of over the desk where the the children were interviewed and then onto the platform where the three hag, now two hags are sitting there. Candle Teeth is bringing up the next, uh, victim, Gertie is mounting around in this, and Bertha stands by the by the uh, cauldron. The Oni is over with the over with Gertie Grinder. Okay. Um. And the boy is coming up to give his name. Right in front of you, mounting uh, the stairs now. God. Right. Damn it. <sighs> okay. Um, Run's gonna use one of her charges of uh, Misty Step. Morbenthal's left or right? Yeah, I believe it's the left. Is it? Okay. Left is. No, it's the right. Okay. And she's gonna use Misty Step to get behind Gertie, who's the one doing the names, and. Stab the shit out of her. All right. The ruins on Morbethal's right, the femur of the old wizard glow brightly. Your form evaporates and immediately forms right behind Gertie, unnoticed, as she stoops to regard this child. And I want to hit her with uh, Morbethal's left because it is the dagger of silence, and I want to shut her the fuck up. Nice. Stabby stab. All right. Who are you, little what? Go ahead. Roll your... <laughs> All right. Uh, I rolled a 19 plus 8. And Would that have been an yeah. advantage? Oh. Is it sneak attack? Because she had no clue that I was there. You are not, you're not attacking. It's sneak attack, but it's it's not backstab, right? Because it's she's not attacking an, an ally. Is that correct? Just, well, but she got she she. Location. Anytime I have advantage in a definitely role. you've got it you've got advantage. Go yeah. on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all right. Cool. So um, let's do that then. 
ba, 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 ba. so it's going to be two, three, plus two, wait, two, three, plus four, seven, plus um, 16 total. Suddenly silenced and, and um, remember that's cast as a spell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can stab and I'll let you cast at the same time as your, as your bonus. But she, she is, because it's just willed for you to do it. She is, she feels this searing pain. And are you just attacking with she, the one? Uh, well, she gets to save. It's a yep. D, DC 15 intelligence save. Yeah, she saves for sure. For a moment, she you hear this croak. And then she, oh, oh, and she starts to flail behind her. Uh, second attack. To, okay, go on. <laughs> ah, um, 15. Seven, uh, miss. 17 Fuck. to make it. Uh, she swings wildly behind you, but she's going to wait for her attack as she's kind of clawing behind her like this. However, pretty Prudence Candle Teeth now sees you, and she sort of looks what? <laughs> like this. Um, when she cries, you can see the Oni look up uh, off to your right and look right at you. And this mischievous smile sort of crosses her face as she's bringing up a severed wrist to take a bite of it. Oh! All right. Um, The three of you and everybody in the cavern hears this crazy wail, this scream coming out of the of the keep. It doesn't appear to be joyous at all. It's it's kind of panicked uh, scream, and you can actually see the the lens quiver for a moment up above. I got something going on with my thing here, so I can't see anyone. So, um, um, would it would I have had time between ending off what I had said, um, the whole uh, little prayer thing that Rook had said, to have started ritually casting silence, um, not as a, 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 to hold the spells so that he doesn't waste a slot. No, you wouldn't know that this was going on. Um, all right. Oh no, no, so- that was my plan to, to to start casting it though. Oh, but again, okay, never mind. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, you Sorry. wouldn't be aware that this was happening. Right it didn't at this happen. Moment. Okay, yeah. Here no, I, I. You're saying to silence. It, he's saying that it wouldn't have mattered. He would have prepared mattered. it I anyway. Was, that yeah. was my preparation. Was oh, the, you've prepped it. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you prepped I don't want to waste the spell slot by casting it automatically since I can ritually cast it or start sure. to ritually No, cast, but got it. 10 minutes totally. To Bees, okay. your attention is focused and everything is drawing your eyes to the, the pile of bones in front of the hag's coven. Um, Runt, I'm going to ask you for what your movement is or what you're doing. Quickly uh, my movement is... Let's see. It's with the daggers. Uh, I have 40 movement speed, but if I'm dashing, it's going to be 40, uh, 80. so yeah. 80. Yeah. yeah. So. Where are uh, you? I, what well, direction? Yeah. If I can, if I see any of those mirrors, I want to grab as many as I can before I take off. If you possible. can... You can take the one that's in the box that she placed, or you can take okay. the one that's in Len Trimble's hand, but you're going to have to run directly at uh, Pretty Prudence Candle Teeth. Um, you can, the one that's closest is probably the one in the box. Okay. And Snag it is directly it. in, okay, it's in line with the, um, uh, curtain from which you came. Okay. Okay. So you're you are moving fast, and you're going to grab this ki- this mirror on the on the way past. Yep. Okay. Where are you headed? Um. Shit. To uh, uh, the exit where we got away last time. If I can see that. All right. You will skirt yourself around in front of the 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 curtain. Um, one of the hags reach out reaches out to grab you. Um, she misses wildly. Okay. Uh, the Oni um, is amused, but doesn't move exactly yet. And you are running behind the children, who all seem a little stunned and don't seem to really react. Um, and you're, and you can make that uh, crev- that crack in the wall um, and lodge yourself in it. Uh, however, the 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 hags are not organizing, and they're ready to 
to give give chase. Does so you are like, now. Yeah, does it look like they're chasing me? Oh yeah. Okay. Good. Um. So they are. They are. Uh, they're they're pissed at least, and you've got a mirror, and so you are booking it out this. Mm-hmm. This. Uh, um. Window. You make it all the way to the window, and you are now at the edge of the window, and you see that you are facing the boneyard and the wooded glen far off in the distance where you're where you escaped originally. Okay. Okay. So, all right. Okay. Uh, the rest of you, we're going to go ahead and just roll initiative right now, if you don't mind. Um, so we have it done. You guys can still see me, right? I just lost some use of my computer. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah you're fine. Can see you're you. fine. Okay, you're good. good. <laughs> it's weird, but all right. <laughs> it's got like frozen images of you guys. <laughs> Okay. Give me one moment. Uh, Grinder and Nanny. Okay. Uh, who has 20 or above? 23. 23 to Gein and Rook. Also 23. Uh, uh, just each of you roll uh, another s- s- 20. I got a 14 on that one. 18. Okay, again, you're first in the order, and then 23 to Brooke. Okay, uh, anybody above 15? Anybody above 10? Oof. Anybody above 5? Nope, I rolled a 4. 6. <laughs> okay, so Runt and... Oh, you could you have that initiative thing. Did they get yeah. rid of that with Tasha's? Yeah, they got rid of that. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. Gein, you are the first to act. You are right now next to Goro. I'm going to turn to Rogar and use my entire action to call out to him. Help him, please. Rogar will um, come over and scoop this uh, this um, raccoon dog man into his arms and and take him away from the wall and take him back towards the children. The children move away from Rogar and now are sharpening. They've got their, their blades and they look as though they're ready to sprint across the field and they are standing directly behind you, Rook. Okay. Okay. Uh, that'll take us... Rook, you are in on the shoulders of this giant. How far away is this giant from the the middle, the, uh, the actual... Sorry, like where the coven is, like twenty feet to the bone pile, another twenty feet to the edge of the the superstructure, and um, which windows uh, you can see but are dark. Okay. There's also um, uh, a score of, of skeleton soldiers uh, standing around, and um, you can see some movement. Okay, um, can I? Somehow, I've got, with my bonus action and movement and action, I can go uh, 90 feet, I think. Yes, 90 feet. Um, could I... No, I can't do that. Let's not do that. Let's use... Um... Is there any way that I can use... Okay, I'll, I'll use my movement and my a- uh, bonus action to get to the where the edge of the windows are, you know, uh, of the superstructure. Yep. Um, and that would be, and then my action would be to disengage from those bone guys so that I don't get a tax opportunity as I run past. You're going to just try to skirt past them. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Uh... And then uh, once I get to the uh, the outside of the structure, then that'll be, uh, that's the end of my turn. That's using all my action, bonus action, everything. All right. So. Um, you were doing it in haste and with no stealth, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, bees, you sense that this has happened. You can see it, but you can almost sense it through the eyes of one of these 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 I mean, this sort of far off sense. Yeah, you just hear this. Yeah, boom, <laughs> and he starts running. <laughs> nanny Grinder has ex- has has. Pretty um, Grinder or Nanny Bertha? Pardon me, Nanny Bertha. Thank you. Has. Hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> is yelling orders, uh, telling the. You can hear her. Um, screaming at her sisters and the Oni to do something. Get that mirror, you can hear her say. Um, you can hear the large cleaver of Gertie Grinder leaving the table and um, f- 
foot, footfalls behind you, Runt, through the window as she heads for the for the uh, flame gate, and you can hear it go poof and, and extinguish for a moment. The bone soldiers are uh, unable to see you. However, the entire um, bone pile seems to somewhat shudder and come alive this entire boneyard uh, Runt you are now at the window the egress and um, you can hear this sound behind you in front of you you don't see any any bone warriors or anything but you do see a little bit of movement off in the distance uh, is there anyone here that I can um, I can stash myself and hide and wait for someone to come by and then jack them as they come by um, not really. You're kind of in this. You're only about three feet from the edge in this, in between these two columns, like you're wedged between two trees. Um, you could tr- attempt to climb up out of the reach of one of these big hags, or out of the, out yeah, of the reach sure. of a cleaver. Sure. Uh, or you can, sp- and you can sprint. That's. I'm gonna try and slow her down. Okay, so you're climbing. Yes. All right, you are climbing how high up this... Uh, keep in mind these hags at full height are fairly... like They're medium fiends, but they're not short. And so you begin to scale up this, this space, right? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, that, you're going to use your entire movement to do that? Or? Yes, as high as I can get okay. um, without don't... hurting myself if I were to drop on her. So you don't see her immediately um, come around, uh, but you ready yourself and you're climbing up through these these termite mounds okay pretty prudence candle teeth has uh pushed little limb tremble back to the floor and um she has run up to the the door as well and and um is peeling around the other side bees you are on this island again you're you're there you're all there but you are you are feeling touched at this point and you are not sure what this means other than the fact that you are worthy and your power has grown yeah um i'm going to will these creatures to move forward and stay here how high is the moon right now just with a thought those four creatures begin to lope forward and immediately begin the three with the with the the weapons begin to crash into these these on this onslaught of of um, bone warriors, so they begin to sort of mow them down. Um, the moon is now uh, high enough in the sky that it's striking you. It's striking the 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 space. Um, this lens is focusing this dark lunar energy down into the into the into the coven's nest. And and you are standing there, and you can see the bone warriors. You can see your warriors, um, and you can see your friends. You can just see the top of this of this coven. Am I feeling the moonlight coming from both directions? Yep. I'm you are just, you are absolutely saturated at this point. I'm just gonna continue to control. Uh, they don't need to have your direct control. You've willed okay. them into action, and now they are on a mission. You have told them to, to march forward and attack, and that is exactly what they're doing. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep As my if you've given them an order, right? Hmm? For a little bit longer. You're going to hang tight? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the bone giant without the... Without the um, uh, weapon has strode up to the to the uh, pile of bones and is beginning to sweep it aside like this. Okay, uh, roll stealth check for me, please, Runt. If you're trying to remain hidden. Sure. Uh, Twenty-one. Chishioa, daughter of blood, races past your opening, nostrils flaring, um, moving past and and 
glancing in the darkness and then scanning the, the boneyard out and then moving on. Gein, you are... Rogar is now tending to um, Goro. Okay. Um, before that starts, just FYI, Tim, uh, Noel dropped, so... Um, okay. Just... I'm sure there'll be some scrambling, yeah. um, and mm -hmm. we may have to pause. I will... Uh, I will ask... Um, well, I'm just letting him back in here, but... I, oh, there you go. Okay. Oh, whoops. Sorry about that, guys. I'm not sure if that's a please don't pause or whatnot, but um, I'm gonna... It's all good. Okay. Um, I am going to pull out my bow, knock an arrow, and speed after Rook, and I'm just gonna use my movement, and plus... Oh, I don't really want to... How... Wait... How far was it from where we are to how far Rook is? You said small, you went 90 feet? Small yeah. island. You When you're standing on the um, on this island. Uh, 60, I think it was. Oh, I it was only my, 60. I used my movement and my bonus action to dash. So yep. it's a total of 60 movement, and I was right next to the window of the structure. Yep, that's right. Okay. Then I will do the same. I'll... Because I've got 45 feet, so I'll use my movement okay. plus Sorry, an action to dash and, be, and before you do, um, you can you can see him, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, as you as you cross to make your run, mm -hmm. um, oh, do, are you armed? I've got. I I pulled out my bow and I knocked an arrow. All right. Um, he's in range. And you see the Oni round the corner and begin to advance on his position at a dead run, coming from counterclockwise, coming from the left side. Where, if I stop where I am, are there the little thingy-mabobs in the boneyard? You're, you're still on the island at this point? Oh, I'm on the Lit? island. Yeah, and your bow is humming, and its bowstring is white. Okay, then I'm not going to worry about distance and just trust my gut and go ahead and take a shot at the at the Oni. Make it an Onigiri. <laughs> right? <laughs> onigiri. <laughs> onigiri Oni. Um, <laughs> and since I'm so far away, I'll add my Kensei shot to that. Um, oh. I'm just gonna assume this is regular stuff. Oh, that's a 22 to hit. You hit? Okay, and... Plus three. That's 14 damage. Nice. Okay, I would like you to add... As you let your bolt go, it leaves your string. You see it coarse. It's glowing white. Mm -hmm. You see the arrow split into three. Sweet. Your damage is tripled, and you add Whoa. 1d6 times three radiant damage as it strikes the Oni. 1d6, <laughs> okay. Oh, I rolled a six! Uh, 18. So, okay. So 14 times three plus 18. I don't math. No, nope. 42 <laughs> plus 18 is 50, 60 points of damage. The Oni is at full strength. Oof. The Oni is knocked backwards as three shining bolts hit it. Rook, you're unseen at this point, but you see these three glowing bolts fade and only one remain sticking out of the Oni. But the Oni is flattened against and, and sort of tossed from your view. But you uh, did just... catch it just as, she, as he came into view. If I see the Oni go down, am, am I looking at where in front of me is the uh, the the structure, and then to the left is where the Oni is coming from? You are in this crevice where you you hid, right? And if you were, depending on whether or not, let's say you were facing into the building, yeah, you facing saw, in, yeah, you saw the Oni coming around to your left, just okay. appearing, blue skin, three lightning, three, right. yeah, moonlit arrows, knock knock knock. <laughs> Can I see into where I'm going? Into the room where the uh, three hags are? This, this does not have a window um, that is lit. 
So no, you can you can't see into this. I've got dark vision for sixty feet. Oh, you sure can see this. Yeah. Um, you are looking into uh, what would appear to be a bedroom. Okay, so it's not. I can't see any of the hags or anything. I just see the. No, you see a darkened spell. bed. You see several moving forms on the floor, and you see a small child standing on a table in front of you. And you um, recognize that that child is Runt. Yeah. She went back into the room? Oh. I thought she... Oh my god! Everybody that... drink! I got you again. <laughs> Son of a... Um, you see no child. You see a slightly <laughs> cracked... I'm sorry. Man. You see a so, slightly cracked curtain and right, a bunch of moving maggots curtain. on the floor. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh wait, it's my turn, isn't it? Hmm. Oh, <laughs> derp, sorry, that was... Okay, uh, if that's the case, I will get... I, I, I need to... My, my main um, goal is to get inside to see where the three hags are, or one or two of them, wherever they are. You can see one of the hags directly in front of you uh, on a platform casting something, calling up some dark power, and um, she's a gargantuan sort of hag. Um, you see another hag kind of, um, pardon me, at this point you would have seen one of the hags booking it, maybe. You would have caught the tail end of somebody uh, racing around and a okay. past that hag see a, a, a purple flame barrier spring right. back to life covering a door. So my main question about that is, is if I could see, if I could have seen uh, that bigger hag that's in the center there um, before my turn started, I would use my reaction to uh, drop that silent spell on the area. Okay. Um, I will say you aren't there yet. Okay, you had to go to the crack in the in the curtain to see it. Okay, so in that case, I wouldn't be able to do it. So but then no, I'll... hang on. I'll say you could get... You were already in the window, so you have yeah. your movement to traipse across, get to the curtain, you can see the hag. Yeah, so if I could see it before my turn started, I would use my reaction to, to, to throw down my silence spell. And if I can't see it before my turn started, I'll use my action to throw it. Okay, the go spell. ahead and throw your silence spell and tell me what this And so, uh, is that using my action or before my turn starts? Well, I'm going to say that, that your, you had initial movement, right? Okay. Um, yeah. You moved through the room to the table. Looked, as soon as you looked up to that crack, you could see the hag. Okay. If you're immediately planning to do that, you can go ahead. Yeah, that's why I was planning to, to casting it as I was running in the ritual. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just double check sounds here. Okay. So for the duration, no sound can be created within a pass through a 20 foot radius sphere. So 40 feet diameter sphere centered on a point. I'm going to center it on that hag. And does she have a save? No, there's no saves or anything. All Any right. creature or object entirely inside the sphere is immune to thunder damage, but they're deafened and they casting a spell that includes a verbal component is impossible. Whoa. I had to really God, stretch drop. to get that thing. Ooh. All right, <laughs> you drop a silent thing, and suddenly her voice, she loses the verbal, um, and she uh, she starts to panic and look around. And I'll uh, use my bonus action to bamf the 30 feet with my Shatter Kai ability to get yep. right next to her, and then you my are. action to attack her. Go ahead. Um, I'm guessing that Runt is next. No, Runt ran off. Nope, Runt is not there. Off. Okay, so I don't, I, I don't think I'd get advantage on the attack, even though I just showed up right behind her. It's up to you. Okay. Um, I mean, it's the same as what Rent would have did, right? That's yeah, what yeah. Whatever, whatever your thought is. Uh, advantage if she's attack. Is it knowingly attack an ally? It's it's definitely backstab. I mean, you're okay, there. Okay, yeah. So if it's backstab and I get advantage, then I'll take this. I'll take it for the sneak attack. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so in that case, I will use yeah. So I'll sneak attack with the rapier, and mm. um, as he af as he tele uh, as he bamps in as he teleports in, Oof. yep. Um, he's gonna lick the white part of the uh, Tsukikagi blade, and um, just kind of like wink at the moon, and then he's going to attack with advantage of the rapier. So one d eight plus five. Let me do it. Yes, one d eight plus five. Okay. Oh, that's not too good. That's a ten. That was a hefty thud. Yeah, I know. I'm using the uh, ye big old 30 millimeter, but I rolled a 10 and I rolled a 13. So plus my attack, that is a 19 was the call. All oh, right. What was the what was the attack roll though? 19. I just that makes it. Down, okay, so. go on. And uh, 1d8 plus 5 for the damage of the blade. Does the licking of the t of the of the doesn't do anything? Mm -hmm. Just for flavor. No, it's just that's fine. He likes he, it. He's just, he's just trying to be cool. Yeah. 
Shut up. I mean, you're not wrong. But shut up. <laughs> <laughs> sure, no. you know, I, I think I should just right. take a drink for that because <laughs> we already know he's okay. a weirdo. So, hey, you, you gave me some luck though, Luna. Looks like because I rolled an eight on Sweet. the damage dice. So eight plus five, so thirteen slashing or piercing. Yeah, thirteen piercing, and then the sneak attack is how much? Is my sneak attack? Two d six. So thirteen plus one. Mm-hmm. And four. Okay, so 13 plus five. And I will also use um, my uh, d- d- one of my bardic inspirations to do a um, blade flourish, the defensive flourish. Yep. Uh, and that is. Double check here. Uh, defensive flourish. You can spend one of your bardic inspiration to cause a weapon to deal extra damage. So it's 1d6 extra. And then I add that to my AC until the start of my next turn. So I uh, did. D6, five, nice. So 13 plus one plus four plus five. So 23 total damage. And then I'll kind of circle around her a little bit and just be like, that stance, old lady. All right. Um, Snarling, she wheels around and she uh, strikes out with two claws on you. AC is 21. Um, okay, she will miss with both claws. Of course, when I said let's dance, old lady, it came out as because there's no sound <laughs> in the area. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> so it was like, it looks like those 1920s movies where he says something and it shows up on screen and then disappears. <laughs> <laughs> because why um, not? <laughs> She she misses with both of you, smiles slightly, and then waves her hand in front of your face. Go ahead and... Um... Oh, is there a verbal component to that? No. Oh, damn. Okay. Go ahead and just uh, uh, roll save for me. It'll okay. be wisdom. Wisdom save. All right. Oh, not great at those. Plus one. Come on. Give me a good thunk. Oh, natural 20. Ah. Yep. You... <laughs> You feel yourself uh, something happening, and then and then wave off. She snarls, and then and then sort of uh, begins to turn around with her, her back hunched, and and is sort of stalking around. You don't hear the snarl; you just see it. Gertie Grinder uh, rounds the um, space where you were runt, and you see her running, following the oni now uh, in their path. Um. The bones have begun to, begun to coalesce, and and now a large wave of bones is is racing towards the um, our Firbolg uh, giant that's trying to um, move the this bone pile away. Um, the others are engaged with with an increasing swarm of bone soldiers and a couple of these bone constructs, and they're in mad battle. Runt, you are perched uh, somewhat up on top of this um, structure, and you can now, you are underneath this large purple lens, and you can, you're cast in, in purple light, and you can see down into this, and you can actually see Noel um, uh, bamf into view, and then Gertie and Noel begin to... Rook. 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 Gosh, Rook. <laughs> One of these days, Tim, it'll, it's all good. You'll get there. Sorry, Rook and, in <laughs> Rook and Gertie are, are, are There's now a lot going on. surrounding going each on. other. Yeah, just shut up, you guys. And so they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're circling each other menacingly, and you can see Rook move into frame and then, and then uh, through this, this this chimney and then, and then um, Gertie snarling. What would you like to do? Uh, I want to try to get behind her and... Um, Stab her. Sure. Do you want to drop on her? How do you want to move? Um, I don't want to drop on her. I'll just like chill down. Okay. Soon Stab enough, her. she's she is past your position and she's right below you, and then she's moving around, and you have your opportunity if you'd like to drop straight. Yes. Okay. Right. Drop an attack. Rook, you can see this this uh, young girl 
sort of like a, a pile of laundry fall behind her and, and stand up. Two bone daggers. And she and Runt begins to match Gertie's step as she's engaged with you. Prize, bitch. <laughs> Press fries, bitch. <laughs> um I missed with one and I hit with the other. Seventeen for, is your Yep. Yeah, for thirteen damage. Thirteen damage? Yep. Nice. She's bloodied. As as you as your blade goes in and out, and she seems worried and she's distracted from you, Rook, for a moment and turns to face Runt. Oh, wait. Or at least she, to regard her. Is she um, dealing with both of us? Are we both yep. on her? You're okay, on then. front, Runt's yep. in behind. Um, you got your sneak, right? Yep. Okay, good. Never mind. That's with sneak? Yeah, that okay. was with sneak. Yeah. Pretty Crudence has rounded the other side. Now, Gein, you can see that. Uh, this bone pile is heading towards uh, Gein and Bees. You can see both this bone pile. You've just fired on the Oni who's starting to stand up. You can see Gertie Grinder heading from that same direction. And then around the other side, you see Pretty Prudence Candle Teeth um, beginning to converge on this side. Bees. How far away are they from me? They are less than. It's gotta be more than 60 feet. Right. Oh, they're more than 60 feet. Uh, like, what did I say again? Uh, I said it was, it was 60 for me to get from the 60, furball 60. to the, yeah. Yeah, 60, 60, the, 60 Are they 120. within 120 feet? Oh, yeah. Oh, they are. And yeah. are they within 10 feet of each other? Not yet, but they are soon closing on the, the two hags now have begun to close and, and attack the skeleton, skeleton war, your skeleton warriors. Uh, so so, are those two hags within, within... Um, 10 feet of each other or no? I will say yes. Okay, I'm dropping a moonbeam at third level right in between the two of them. And you can move a moonbeam, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As an action, right? So, third level, uh, it's con saves. 15. You are on the... And the uh, shape changer... A shape changer makes it saving throw with disadvantage. So okay. then it would become just a regular roll for the hags, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Because they have advantage on magical effects. Yep. Damn hags. <laughs> Sorry. Um, what's the. One more time. What's this? Uh, con 15. Con 15. You hit one, uh, the other one takes half damage. However, standing on this island. Your moonbeam is automatically cast at sixth level. Oh, 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 oh that's dangerous. I need that's to not a moonbeam. That's, that's a moon monolith. <laughs> um. Okay. So that is. I'm just imagining the same I... sound that the on, uh, robot <laughs> made from <laughs> um, <laughs> Thor. You know the like the. Twenty nine, thirty eight points of damage. 38 shared or split? Uh, oh, sorry. Um, if they failed their save, it's 38. If they passed, it's 19. Hey, a searing beam drops down onto both of them. Three, um, you, are, you drop them into the middle of a tumult of 12 skeleton warriors mm -hmm. uh, and two of these hags. The one hag is screams and hits the ground shivering uh, as your as your furbolg warriors begin to pepper her with blows as she goes prone. The other one appears damaged and reels. The ten remaining skeleton warriors that are now facing your furbolgs explode <laughs> and just turn to dust. Four of them outside of the moonbeam begin to attack again. And you can now see that a bone golem is racing towards this. Okay. Um, also, just as a reminder, if they start their turn there, I have to roll damage for them. Yep. They are hurting ladies. Okay. We are at the... The Oni has raised itself up. It forms a bead on you, Gein, and is running hellbent for you. Between you and the Oni are the children racing into the battle. Yeah! 
I mean, no for child soldiers, but yeah! <laughs> they all are unsuccessful as they swipe at the Oni as it pushes sort of past them, as they as it's got a bead on you. However, it manages to get out the clawed hand. How far away are you from the Oni? I was still at the fountain. Yeah, I thought you were, you were firing from it's the just longbow, look, right? It's looking at you, and oh, it's okay. racing yeah, yeah. towards you, and it's intercepted by the kids, okay, who right. who are trying to stop it at this point. Um, Hopefully get a couple of shots off before it... That's what know, I'm hoping. Or meet it, if you can. I'm ready to drop my bow if I need um, to. They, He has taken two swipes at... Mm. Tweet. Tweet, baby drops tweet. To, tweet drops to <gasps> the ground. Tweet. My baby Tweet! And you can tell from your position that Tweet is eviscerated by this Oni. <laughs> my baby As the other three the other three turn on their heels and begin to chase after it, quickly losing Rach. its pace, and it is just running towards you on a mission. He deleted his Twitter account. Okay. My baby. Yeah. Tweet's really hurt. Let's just say. Uh, sub. Well, we'll just we'll just play that by ear. Maybe he can be saved. Maybe. It's a child. I mean, I, w- I. It doesn't matter if he dies or not. But I'm just like my baby. Uh, it matters. <laughs> that changed so quick. Hey, like, oh, no, I. I just. <laughs> I mean, I just don't want Tim. I don't want you to be afraid to kill people if it comes to that. Well, well I'm not gonna kill. Well, okay, we'll see. He's he's down. Um, the oni is looking you square in the eye and closing fast. What? It used half its he, movement to get up, right? Is it my turn? Yep. Okay. And it's yeah. it, but it's uh, this oni is is it's like uber fast. It's flash it's fast. In a, as a demon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Shit. Right. right. But right. it's still far enough away for me to still get a shot on it. And it's it hasn't closed the distance yet, but it's halfway there. Okay, yep. Then okay. I'm still uh, you, uh, you, your sound has dropped out a little bit. Um, is it better? Not quite, but it's okay. Really? I can hear you. I can, can hear, hear you, but it's just barely. not really loud. Uh, I mean, the music. Uh, I don't know. I haven't changed anything. Oh, there you're. Now you sound better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and okay. So with the previous shot. I only shot once and three things came out, but I have two two attacks on an action if I attack. Right on. Go okay, for it. Okay, so I can technically shoot twice? Go on it. Okay. Yep. Then I'll do the first one. Um, we'll do it later. And see. Shoot your shot. Yeah. You All right, this. same thing, 22 to hit for the first. And um, if everything is still the same. Let's see. 36. I rolled another six. So that's um, 54 damage oh, for that. Shit. For shot? All right. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And the Oni is bloodied. If it's As still running, boom, 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 boom. yeah, and it races towards you. It's still running. Still running. Then I'm gonna do another shot, um, and this time I'm gonna add a deft strike to this. If it hits, I think. Let me make sure. No, why aren't you there? Death strike. Oh, what's on each of your turns when you hit a target? With, you can spend. Okay, so if I hit first, so let's see if I hit first. Oh, that's even better. That's 20, 20 something to hit. I, I don't know. Go on. So I'll add that. Is the deft strike also? Yeah, because it's part of the thing. It's tripled. Okay. Uh, so much math. 10, 14, 17, 18. <laughs> I rolled another six again. <laughs> um, are you serious? 
times three. Okay. Plus, that's sixty-nine damage. Oh my Hit. god, dude! <laughs> Dang, what the man! Heck? Dang. The only um gets pelted, fum, fum, fum. and you can see it skid to a halt and look at you. And turn into vapor. That's right. Smiling as it does. Not dead, but discouraged. Um, the Rook. Yeah. We are with you. You, Nanny, and Runt circle each other in a death dance. Uh, I will. Uh, yeah. Let's. Uh, let's. This um, yeah, sw- straight into uh, an attack with the rape here again, please. And how long does the cone of silence last? The cone of silence. Let me double check. That is a good point. It's concentration. Um, yeah. So if I do get damaged, we'll have to take concentration checks. Uh, up to ten minutes. Okay. So. Yes. So like you know. Sixty round. Wait. Six. Three hundred sixty rounds. Six. Three hundred sixty rounds. Yeah. Only three hundred sixty. You know, whatever. Rounds. What yeah. am I? Six times ten. Six seconds per round. One ten minute. Rounds. Ten rounds. times ten is a hundred rounds. Six hundred rounds. Six hundred. A hundred rounds. Hundred yeah, rounds. rounds. Yeah. Go on. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I will attack with my blade again. I'm guessing his runt is right there. That it will be sneak attack with the engagement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make sure that runt isn't within five feet of me. So I'm always going to be on the opposite end of him. Because if he's within five feet of me, I lose the her. Her, sorry, Jeep, Jeep, Jeep. <laughs> the young lass with the blonde hair, who is definitely a female. Definitely sorry. a female. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. All right, I'll take a drink. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's yeah, a seventeen plus numbers, so twenty-four. Yep. Go on. One D eight plus five. Uh, ooh, only a two. Okay, uh, seven plus. That was better for um, and three. Okay, seven plus seven, 14 damage for the attack. And do I want to roll my... Yeah, I got three of them. I'll do one more again to do the uh, blade flourish, which for this one I will do... Uh, Yeah, I'll do uh, an extra defensive flourish again, so I'll re-roll with the okay. defense. So it does uh, 7 plus 7, 14 uh, plus 4, so 18 total damage, and my AC is now uh, 20 until the start of my next turn. Okay. Uh, Nanny will claw... Double checking something here if I have a bonus action. I can do this. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, no, I'll be fine. I'll stay where I am. Never mind. You see, Na- you see, Nanny Bertha race to the table where the where uh, her lectern, and she claws her way up onto the table with you in pursuit, Runt, and okay. fumbles around and uh, grabs a small. Uh, round lacquered eye and holds it close Um, and then she turns on you and swipes with with a claw missing Um, and that is going to attempt to do one thing hang on How far away is she from um, the other hag? Yet. Uh, oh, um, she a... tries to squawk out something, and she begins to cast a spell, and then realizes she can't. And and you can hear her snarl, like you can imagine her snarling. And then she takes this this uh, eye, and she begins to run, uh, you know, as fast as she can towards the flame barrier of the doors. Okay. Um, Runt, you have an attack of opportunity. Yay! I like those. Uh, seven, eight, nine, nine, eighteen. 
Yep. No, 20. Sorry, 20. Still good. I subtract one instead of adding one. Um, <laughs> Get a girl. See. <laughs> that is three, eight. Eight points? Uh, eight points of damage, yeah. Yep. Okay. Hurting. Uh, now, you don't get an attack of opportunity, Rook, because she disengaged. Uh, who did? You didn't get one when she disengaged from you. You already had your attack. So she used her movement to turn to the table, grab the eye. She uh, run, did get an attack because she was behind her. Now she's heading out towards right. that door. She is well and bloodied, and she's heading towards that flame curtain as fast Technically, as Technically, if she disengages with an action, she doesn't get any attacks of opportunity. So Runt wouldn't even get one either. Technically. Well, you were next in the order anyway, so I'm going to let oh. you go ahead and hit her. Runt, uh, uh, is there any change to your your tactic? If you, uh, I would just hit her again. Go ahead, go on. All right. Uh, seventeen plus like twenty-two, I think. Yep. Um, Anything four. over seventeen wins. Ooh. Winning. Six points damage. All right. She's down to one quarter, roughly, of where she should be. Um, and she is making it now to the flame curtain. And you can see her part the flames and and begin to side sideways through, trying to close them behind her. All right. The bones uh, continue to move on your, your your soldiers, as well as a large uh, bone mammoth is now charging into where the children are, and it's going after the three that are running, or the two that are running. Um, Prudence Candle Teeth is rip, has, has gotten up from her smoldering state. A grinder is at her side, and they are being pummeled by these um, these skeleton warriors. They both take massive hits on one of them and manage to knock it to its feet um, just with their claws, and then they, they are attempting now to uh, push them over and um, you can, they're just sort of locked in this battle but they're both taking hits and so they're kind of wondering what they're going to do. roll damage for them too if they started their turn. Ah! Alright, go so, on. They stopped to roll their con save and I lost a few times. Oh no! Whatever shall you do with your <laughs> 7 million d10s? Con save right. is what again? Uh, 15. Two and an eleven, so they both miss. Uh, yes. All right, twenty-five, thirty-two. Point of damage. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, um, pretty, pretty Prudence Candle Teeth. Um, Ain't so pretty no more. And and her skin peels away from her skeleton, and she crumples as the last b- blows of the, the skeletons. Uh, fall on her. Gertie Grinder turns tail and begins to run as fast as she can uh, in the direction of the trees. Do the uh, big guys get a little attack of opportunity on her? She's or is she disengaging? Uh, uh, she fought. I'm going to say she fell through, and they're going to go ahead and kick. They act, none of them actually are successful, and she is now hightailing it for the trees. Um. Not in the direction of the river, maybe. That wouldn't be something that she would decide to do, would it? <laughs> That's the direction she's heading now, um, oh, whether or okay. not she changes course, but she's 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 definitely breaking off in the way she came. No reason. Okay. Just, you know. um, that takes us to... Man, this is complex. We're going to... Uh... You're doing a great job. Everything is awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the Oni is... Not there... The moonbeam's been cast, and we are back up at Gein. Gein, you are watching Prudy run away, or sorry, Gertie run away. You are, uh, the, you're seeing the last of your, the skeleton warriors fall to the moonbeam. You are seeing a bone golem closing on your two little friends. Uh, Hags are priority to me. If I can have a shot at her, I'm going to take it to her. Yep. She's right. still within range. Okay. Nineteen to hit. Um and uh, 
This, these, this is like an artillery placement right there yeah. on this <laughs> on this thing. Um, 51 damage. Okay. Um, and if she's still up, I'm going to do it again. Okay. That one missed, so I'm going to use my inspiration to try that again. Okay. Oh, yeah, much better. Um, Beans just, being just, put to good use. Yeah. <laughs> Brewing that into some advantage coffee and chugging down. Uh, that's only 45 damage. Oh, only. Only 45. Oh, shucks. Oh, I no. know. <laughs> well, you're doing um, great. You've, <laughs> you have flattened this hag with the with the um, assistance of Salune and your moonbow. Um, Get it? Ha 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 ha. She hits the, the ground. What's the uh, diameter of the cone of silence again? 40 feet. It would be 20 feet in either direction from wherever... Um, Gertie, or Gertie not Gertie, had, Bertha, Gertie, Bertha. Yeah, Bertha had originated. When she, when she, she, Where she was standing when Rook stabbed, or when Runt stabbed her the first time, 20 yep. feet in every direction from... 20 from feet from in every direction. She clears yeah. the gate. Um, uh, Runt, are you in pursuit? All right. Uh, I want you to go ahead and roll a... How would you want to get through a closing flame door? Uh, diving somersault. All right. Go ahead and roll acrobatics, please. Which is the Aiming for stuff? some gap in the flames. All right. Uh, ooh, 11. You are not successful. Um... Oh, Oh, I have inspiration. Yeah, you I have, have inspiration. inspiration. Yes. Go, 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 okay. go. You got this. Inspiration. Um, 18 now. Yeah. You corkscrew through the last <laughs> remaining gap of this, and you can feel the heat of this flame uh, hit your ankles as you make it through. You tumble and then right yourself. You can see that as you're, as you're tumbling, she's still running, and then she turns uh, to face you. Parkour. Um, you are there, but it's not your action. It is hers. Okay. Able to speak. She says. You see, uh, you see a a a, a swirling blue mass next to her and suddenly the Oni appears next to her. She puts her hand on the Oni's shoulder, whispers a few words and <laughs> shifts planes and is no longer in front of you. The coven is all but destroyed but the coven's hag's eye and the, and the uh, Oni have now escaped to some unknown plane of existence. She took the ledger? No. No, she didn't. Oh. Um, the... Okay, Oni, Bones. Rook, you hear a crackling above you. And you can see this large lens begins to split and shatter and begin to uh, crush. And it's as if glass is beginning to rain down on you from several dozen feet above. And these large uh, knife-like um, purple crystal shards of glass begin to head directly for you and for all of the children that are sitting there. And and as they do, the moonlight from above begins to filter through them, and it hits you. Um, and the these spears, you close your eyes as you're expecting them to simply enter your, your flesh, right? Um, do you do anything in that moment? 
Uh, I I have a question which will determine that. Um, do did I see what the any either of the other two hags look like before they ran off? No. Other than um, the one that ran away with the eye. Yes, that's the only one you saw. That's the only one I saw. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, okay, okay. Damn. Right. Well, I mean, if I don't see any of that, I'm going to uh, start running toward uh, where um, where Runt took off to in 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 pursuit of of the Oni and the Hag. Um, did I see them uh, kind of disappear? No. No. Okay. Uh, but these glass shards are falling on you, and as they begin to, they're about to strike you and the children. Yeah. I'm, uh, oh. Uh, oh, and the kids too. Okay. Well, I'll I'll yell to the kids that are left. I'm guessing there's some that were still sitting at the table. They're all sitting down in their rows, looking up. I'll just tell them. I'll yell out, "Get under the the table." Yeah, they can't make it. And oh, they can. No, because um, this is all just beginning to rain down. Um, so they can't just can, get under. They're sitting there. They can't just like get underneath. Like okay, they're in the you open can, area. Yeah, you can hear the you can hear these shards begin to strike the the top of the coven uh, nest, um, but as they as they go through the hole and the moonlight hits them, they begin to dissolve, and by the time they hit you, they just kind of go woof, and go woof. and as they hit the kids, the kids are all kind of showered in in purple smoke, and the moonlight hits the um, fires of the coven's cauldron and just extinguish it so and the unseen. purple light of the of from the cauldron just fades into a sick yellow pus like color on seeing that i'll i'll Merkel just maybe make the assumption that things are looking okay here so he's going to start running toward where he saw runt go um because she yep. was that looking- flame gate is down now oh, and okay. runt you can see her standing uh outside the light in the crystals all around you has faded and then he's he's just gonna uh when he sees run he's gonna go where do they go look for them whatever we can do we need to find them they can't just dis- they can't escape that's two f- that's there's only one left or i don't know i, I don't know that the other ones have gone but... yeah t- t- they are the gun they use magic they left <sighs> use magic yeah it's, it's, it's stupid the Oni is gone. Two of the hags are d- down. The one hag and the Oni are gone. Two sailors um, uh, you can see emerge just from behind these like barrels that are off in the corner. Uh, I When I see one of the sailors emerge, I'll go, you two over there, get over here now. The 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 dark one, the Oni, they, they, they asked us to clear the kids in the room and go after the other hag. She's betrayed the other two and she's taken off with the eye. I don't know. They look <laughs> at you. Uh, go ahead and well, they sort I mean, of regard they you like this. Everything? Yeah, they've watched What are you everything. doing? Just don't just stand there. Get over there. <laughs> they they appear quite drunk. Um, they, uh, they stand up and they begin to walk towards you. Um, sort of looking like what they want to do. Their hands aren't on weapons or anything. What are you doing? Someone maybe to get toward the ship. We need to be able to take off right now. Right. The, yes. ship. Oh, the ship. And both yeah. of them begin to beat cheeks down the pathway. <laughs> and if the Oni is there, tell her that Rook says hi. <laughs> uh. And then, who's this crazy one? You hear one of them say, and they're just, they're <laughs> Right? Gotta, I'm just taking advantage and put some more chaos in the world. I don't know. They are squirreling away. You can't, none of the rest of you can't see this as they are on the other side of the coven um, as they hit the, the ground. Um, you are still filled with an immense sense of, po- uh, sense of power, bees. Uh, B. Sorry, it's stuck. Um, uh, uh, just one last thing, sorry. Uh, as they run away, I'm just going to look back up at the, at the moon again and just utter a little, little question to Saluna or Sandy or whoever's watching be like, please let my sister know what to do. And that's it. Okay. Uh, bees, you still feel the moon above. You are standing on this on this uh, platform and it continues to glow. Um, suddenly the entire area that was, that was um, covered in these bones begins to 
uh, feel a little less heavy. Um, and you can see the, the termite mound in the middle begin to sort of uh, smolder and smoke. Okay, on the outside as the moon is still is still casting its light down on it. So both of the hags are dead, right? Pretty Prudence Candle Teeth and Gertie Grinder are both dispatched. Um, okay. One by your moonbeam, the other by Gein's arrows. Okay. And is the golem still going after the kids? The golem dissolved. Boof. And just the bone warriors fell and anything that was moving now just cast into the into the into the dirt. Okay. Whatever okay. magic was animating it seems to have, have been removed. Okay. So I will drop my moonbeam then because you don't need it anymore apparently. Mm-hmm. Okay. Your moonbeam. Um, and I I mean it's what's that? The moon hammer. <laughs> the moon hammer, literally. <laughs> Um, I'm just still have my hands in the water and I'm just going to be uttering thanks to Salome. Uh, you hear a, a small voice distant and you're feeling exhausted now, but for a moment, um, you hear this voice say, Hey, no problem. Hey. See you later. I like that. <laughs> it sounds such like a, a, yeah, such cool. a cool, such a cool yeah. moon god. Yeah. Get you on the flip flop. <laughs> um, You're a beautiful soul. Adios. <laughs> and this voice, it does seem youthful. The the this 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 voice is like, for lack of a better word, super groovy. Oh my god, we found you your know? sun tree. Oh, yeah. sun everything's, tree. everything's cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then and the platform is still glowing, but not quite as bright. Um you feel st- still feel a connection to this place, but not quite as strong. Gein, your bow begins to quiet. Okay. Um, so Bertha was the one that got away. Gertie was the one I knocked down. Did I see w- w- I I'm so much chaos. I couldn't remember. Was Gertie running with something? Gertie was trying to get away. Did she have something in her hands? Just her, no, just she, her, she was just, just her cleaver. She was, she okay. was hightailing it out of there. Then, um, as soon as Gertie dropped, I would have just ran to go where Rook and Runt are and just see what okay. what was going on. So you run towards the the termite mound. Yeah. It, you can see um, now. You can start to smell this this mound. Um, it feels like it's smoldering right from the moonbeam um and uh, as you run past you run sort of over this 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 bone pile um one of the giants uh is is just sort of standing there kind of haggard the others you can't see them they appear to have fallen and um you begin to which way do you want to go around the you can pick um, a side I wish I had the map still. Um, whichever one I feel like could get me closest. I don't yep. know. Like, <laughs> yeah. So there, it's about it's about equal. So you can e- either way you go, you round around and, and probably to the left because I want to sure, try to get can, where Rook and Runt are. And you can see you don't make it all the way there, but you yeah. you take a wide berth and you can see that um, there's two figures standing out on the road and beyond them two figures hightailing it through the the mountain pass. I mean, Technically, if I use a key point, I have 135 feet of movement in six seconds. Totally. Yep. So you're making it. You're making it halfway around. <laughs> and so by that time, you can see them. You're, you're you can see them clearly on the other side, and you can see these guys uh, run into the docks. Okay. Okay. Well. Jesus. Hello, Roadrunner. Where? Meet me. Where'd she go? One missing. She's carrying some type of fucking eye. And they disappeared. Same with that demon thing, the Oni, whatever it is. Okay. Uh, uh, as you turn past, that was your uh, movement. Runt, looking over their sh- shoulders. Um, sorry, Rook, you're right there. Looking older, over Gein's shoulder, both of you can see um, 
uh, an orange light beginning to creep up in some of the crevices around this this uh, dusty termite mound as it begins to smoke and smolder. And now it's bursting into small flames. Hmm. Fireworks. The the place that we are at where the, it lead, the path that leads down to the beach, are those crystals still going? Nope. They're dark. Sweet. Okay. Wait, didn't we leave like a bunch of kids in the now fire engulfed termites? Yes. yes. Honey, you say that cries begin to emanate from the uh, uh, inside of the termite mound as 29 children plus two uh, no, plus one begin to cry. We should probably go that, take them out. That one. Yes, yes. We need to everybody find a buddy and let's go down to the beach. Okay. Uh, the three of you are, are heading back <laughs> into the structure to try to corral these kids. Um, that takes us up to oh, sorry, Runt. Is that what you choose to do as well? Uh, I'm just following everybody okay. at this point. Yep. Uh, bees, I, bef- you are- before we before we left the area, I like I, w- I just want to make sure that, at least for me, I don't know about Rook or Runt, the kids, I don't know if Griffro's with us or whatever, but they're being led down to the beach away while there's a girl that's still down and I don't know if there are mirrors around that we can look for. So unseen to you, Griffero, Bilquorum, and Rogar uh, began to engage large spiders that were pouring through that hallway, right? So bees, you would start to realize this as you as everything began to quiet down and both Griffero and Bilquorum are standing uh, covered in muck and, and you know, snotty icker as, as they've been hacking at these spiders that are trying to make their way through the rocks to get at the two of you. Okay, so you're the first one to see this as they covered your six, right? Um, the uh, Rogar is still hunched over, uh, confused and sort of half defending this, 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 this all happened very, very quickly, remember? And, and he's over top of this um, raccoon dog man. Is and there- any way I can make the water wave up and like take the spiders out? Uh, the spiders at this point there don't okay. doesn't appear to be any active. Um, um, you could, uh, um, however, they seem to have everything in hand. Okay. So, or claw. So I'm I'm just gonna take my hands out and like slump down up against this thing, <laughs> exhausted. Uh, Rogar. Uh, Is seems sort of perplexed and, and is is looking around, um, looking for the kids. So, um, bees, you are slumped against a rock. Uh, Gein, Rook, and we're out of initiative order. Gein, Rook, and and uh, Runt, you are now trying to ferry these kids out of the um, smoking now smoldering tinderbox that is this that is this um, keep. Is and there any way that I can use precipitation to make sure that the the smoke is rising faster to give uh, fresh oxygen as if we're, oh, you know, crawling out? Yeah, it seems to be uh, forming quite a good chimney. And so it's, you know, the smoke is starting to sort of hang low, but the outside is what's burning, not so much the inside. Ah, uh, okay, gotcha. Uh, little sparks and whatnot are coming inside, though, and, and uh, these maggot creatures are beginning to emerge from underneath the curtain um, as you take the kids out. Um, everything else is as it appeared uh, when you left, so. Is does. there a way to snatch the ledger before it gets burned up? The ledger is standing on a... Uh, table, Runt, you are in possession of one mirror. Uh, 29 other children are holding mirrors or they are on the floor at their feet. Okay, here, I have a quick question. Um, would, would, would Rook be intelligent enough magic-wise to know to have the, to burn the ledger and destroy the mirrors or would he be more suspicious and, and would he want to keep the ledger and keep the mirrors? I don't know. I don't think, I don't think he knows what to do with these things yet. Yeah, so. Okay. I, I, he probably knows to burn the ledger if he saw. One I think of, what uh, I think what you will realize is that the I don't think you have any experience with soul larva, right? No, no, no. Um, 
uh, but I do think that you know that it, it, this this place is going up. Okay, anything left in it is going to be torched. Yeah, I'm just wondering if he's if he's smart enough to realize that the ledger of all the names is better to be burned than to ke- be kept. I mean, I if I see him throwing it into the fire, I would have want him to keep it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, so Gein is speaking up. If you. Yeah. Gein, you can take the ledger as well. I mean, you can grab it. And, I yeah, mean, whoever. if I see it, yeah. And if the okay. kids have their mirrors, I would have tried to tell them to just so you grab a fr- know You wouldn't know what this ledger is, but as soon as no. you go over to it, you look down and it's a list of children's names. And a bunch of them have X's next to them. But the 29 that are ahead of them, the newest ones, uh, you know, appear to be uh, um, 29 children. There's, there's 30 in front of you, right? But that girl still fell. There was Uh, one girl who got sucked into the mirror. Right, but uh, remember that Buzz is with them. Right, okay. Um, I mean, in that entire time, I would have tried to get the kids to at least, you know, grab a friend and start shushing them down to the beach. But in while doing that, trying to... If I see something important, then I would have grabbed it. Or if I see Rook going okay. after something important, I wouldn't want him to burn it because I want yep, us got it. as a group so to. You, keep so you're it. holding, you're got holding, cool. you're holding this, uh, you're holding this, this. Uh, the only thing that's left in here now, other than the Hag's implements and whatever's in this in this coven, in this this thing, is the box of mirrors. There's a, a spyglass. Uh, the Hag's eye is gone. The, there are is... there more mirrors? Because the kids are holding them, you said. Yes, but those some of them have dropped on the floor, and, and there's oh, a okay. box where the mirror was. There aren't any. I mean, this is super meta. But I'm just asking out of sheer curiosity. But there aren't any heart stones, are they? Uh, say more. Um, it's I it, like I Brook wouldn't do this, know this, but it's if a he saw thing. something, if he saw something that looked like a gem or something, he would take it just out of sheer greed. There's lots of things that look like gems around here. Some of them have gone dark and pale, uh, but you haven't looked around yet, right? So yeah, he's not going to have enough time. So he's he'll just. I know it's burning up, so he's going to take. Oh a quick, well, quick... I mean, you you may. I mean, you got to take your chances. Yeah, uh, sure. I'll, th- I'll things are it. starting to. Okay, so you begin to forage, Rook Gein. You've got a book, and you're and you're fielding, and you're taking kids out. Uh, yeah, run, and- you've got a mirror, and there's some kids in front of you with dropped mirrors. Uh, run, did you want to do anything? Uh, I'll take as many mirrors as the kids have dropped. So, s- several of them are, are holding on to them. You gather up the six or so that have been dropped and begin to funnel these kids out the, the door with Gein. Gein? If, if the girl is still on the ground, the one that did get sucked up into the mirror, I wanted to try to fireman like Carrier. If I if I could, I know my strength isn't that well, but she is on a, a table. Yeah, she got chopped up. Oh, yeah. she got chopped up. Mm. Oh, did I completely miss that? Mm. Yeah, the uh, Oni was like chewing on like half of her arm oh, at one point. Yeah. I have no idea what I was thinking about then during that entire time. I completely missed that. Never so mind. as you as you check her, um, she is stone cold, and and um, uh, doesn't appear phased and. Okay. There's no life left in her at whatsoever. That's fine. Then um, I guess I would have done what Runt did and just pick up any stray mirrors and start heading with the kids down to the beach. Now, the only difference is, and I'm trying to remember what I called her because I, I, I lost my note, um, but her name is scribed on the mirror that Runt is holding. Okay? Yeah. Uh, Runt, where's that mirror, by the way? Uh, I don't know. I picked it up and held on to it, so I've had it. Is it in your hand or is it in your in your belt or something. Yeah, something like that. Sure, so it's under your coat. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you you managed to get all these kids out. Um, as this is happening, this smoldering ruin, what are you doing, Vs? V? Um, God, I gotta stop that. I'm exhausted. I'm just... Okay, so you're 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 seeing this smoke. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you guys take, where do you take the children once you... Get My plan was to just go down straight to the beach where the boat was, like follow this path to see where it went. Sure. I'm assuming it goes back to the beach where we came from. Okay. Yeah, you're right. The beach where our our ship was docked, not the. Um, I mean, I mean, this is this path that they followed to come in here. This was the closest thing 
to that to get down to the beach. So if it goes to the Shadows Glen, it goes no, to the that it would go to the. If it's the light one, it goes to the other. Yeah, if they're the following the path that has the crystals on it, it will go yeah. to the 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 Oni's boat. Yeah. If it's following the other side where we were, it'll go to where our boat is docked. So the oh, I wish I had this map. I will take it if we can get to the path that goes to our boat. I'll take them to our boat. Sounds good. Um, so you would have to go back through the woods uh, towards the stream um, to get to the path that goes to the cave. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. And so you can go ahead and you can make that, you can start to ferry them that way. Um, I think the boneyard has kind of been like... Neutralized. Neutralized, yeah. yeah, So they can, so they get a pretty good and the stream is jumpable, I'm assuming. It's not that wide of a stream. The, the stream, at this point, if you look at the map, it's not in your way. Um, you can actually... It's just towards the stream, sorry. But it's to get to the cavern? Yeah, you're just getting to the path that goes to the kids' cavern. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So you then, can go ahead and you can start to ferry the kids around that. That takes you to the south of the of the smoldering keep. Um, tell me, uh, you've got six mirrors plus one in your possession. Runt, the kids have their mirrors, the ones that are carrying them. And... Um, uh, Rogar is standing by. Bees, you hear weeping um, beyond the mouth of the the rocks where the giants were standing. Okay. Yep, and you see uh, you see Hoot and um, Bark uh, around the body of Tweet. I will ask Rogar to help me up. <laughs> I'm tired AF. Okay. And go over and see if I can do something about it. Rogar offers you a, uh, a flask of water as you walk together. He has the body uh, or form of this um, Fennec fox or whatever. Why, Henny? Okay. Uh, tano- tanuki. Oh, Tanuki. It's okay, tanuki. 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 It's yeah. a tanuki raccoon dog. Yeah, yeah. slung uh, in the in the somewhat in a in a in a humanoid form, slung over his back, um, and it's just hanging there loosely. Um, and he takes the two of you go over to the children. I will attempt, hoping that it works. Uh, for uh, I'll do a. Do I not have that? Okay. Um, I'll use my last third level slot for mass healing word. Just tell me what it, it buys. Uh, so, as you call it, words of restoration up to six creatures of your choice that you can see within range regain hit points um, equal to 1d4 plus your spell casting modifier. All right. You managed to stabilize Tweet. Um, okay. I'm just going to say that, that we're going to go ahead with that. Um, okay. with the assistance of Roger. And um, just FYI, he was one point shy of double HP. <laughs> so he is, he's hurting. He's, not, he's, um, not, but he's stabilized, right? He was almost on the other side. And yeah. so the baby his, raged first. He would have yeah, baby rage, baby, baby rage. <laughs> so baby his, rage, half his, that damage. Yeah, his eyes uh, went up and um, he oh. was... Yeah, so it was a fairly massive, two massive hits on him. Um, and uh, okay, so you have these three children reunited with you, and, and you can that see. Do anything for Griffro too? Because or not Griffro, um, Roger. Or oh yeah, uh, my, oh for Goro, my um, Goro. mentor. Too many G names. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Rogar, Goro. Whatever, whatever has got Goro, um, it doesn't appear to be a hit points problem at this point. Um, um, 
So then I'll look at Rogar and very quietly because I'm still exhausted. They try the water and point back to the river. Mm -hmm. So uh, you instruct him to, and as you do, you've got these three children around you. Griffero is standing with Bill Coram, uh, wondering what to do, and you can see a column of children led by your three compatriots beginning to head towards the what you know to be the pass uh, of the Mushroom Dumpling Gang. Um, could I have taken a quick once over to see if I could find any stones or gems or anything that would be, yeah, that would look of in particular interest in the hags? I'm mm -hmm. looking for I'm looking for something that would be have guilt, have uh, had a little bit of reverence, like they would have yep. treated it well. Go ahead and roll a investigation. Please. Can't be perception. No. Okay. Oh, for, <laughs> well. I, I would I'm say not investigation. Looking, I'm not looking. If you're looking through stuff, then it'd be investigation. Perception. It's more like a, okay, if there's something around you, I can take it before this building burns down. Yeah, it's still investigation. Okay, cool. Plus zero versus plus seven. <laughs> I blame you, Tim. <laughs> so you got a plus seven? Uh, well, I had a plus zero, but uh, uh, right there is the natural 20 on the crack hum. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, okay, Ruff, <laughs> rifling through their things um, and kicking a few of these maggot creatures aside. Ugh. Um, you find a uh, a chest. And with it, um, you find a uh, yeah, you find a... I'm just going to say you find a chest at this point. I'll just pick the whole chest up if I can and start trying to run behind uh, <laughs> Gein and run through. Like, I really love kids, but I really like treasure more! <laughs> okay. <laughs> With my minus one strength. Just... Yep. No, you're able... It's not a, it's not a huge, huge chest. Um, Why is it uh, But it surprising? feels... It does feel... It does feel heavy, so you're... you're toddling off with this chest. I feel like the same um, time, but, you know, better looking. All right. <laughs> uh, <You> wish. <laughs> so. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> soon the, uh, which, whichever way that you choose to return bees and Rogar and, and with the... Uh, the, what did you want him to do with the water, by the way? Drink it? Either have him shove it down Goro's throat or put him in it, whatever he felt was necessary. I'm um, Quick, drown the magical. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Oh, we're going to have him do that in a minute. I'm going to say that you walked, meet up with the column. And as you do, you. Oh, somebody's helping me because I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. And you you begin to head towards uh, uh, where you can see the, the, the column of children leaving the the woods. You follow them, and there's where you're in. You, you end up at the at the stream where you had originally parked the boat kind of gone the long long way around now um Ro you ask Rogar to try the water and he scoops up some in his clawed fist and he holds it uh up for the for this um raccoon dog man who doesn't drink it um but he holds it up to his lips um And his lips smolder uh, for a moment. Uh, not smolder, sorry. What's the word I'm looking for? They they um, uh, they quiver for a moment. And um, he opens one eye and then uh, brushes the water away and then um, just seems to fall back asleep in Rogar gives up on this okay you are now heading with the children to the beach is that right yeah I would have t directed them to take them back to the boat I mean I don't know if we noticed the sailors that were attacked last last episode I don't know if those were our sailors or the those the were glint. The, the glint sailors glint sailors um, okay good Yep. Then yeah, um, back to our boat, or at least back to the shore where our boat is, so that they can see us on shore and be like, 
Okay. If, if bees caught up with us, I'll I'll, I'll let um, let them know that one got away. So it's two out sure. of three hags. Uh, you you assemble. You begin to file through these. The kids are going ahead of you. Who's first through the the rocks towards the our boat? I'll do it since I'm leading the kids. Great. You find yourself out onto the rocks, and as you do, you look out onto the beach where the dancing sword was and there is no boat i knew it oh shit and that's where we'll stop (laughs) (sighs) you know you really didn't think someone was going to take locking herself in a cabin as literal insult and then just fuck off with the boat I so, mean, he did kind of cause a mutiny, so... <laughs> so, so here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to have you hold all of your boats and think about it for a week. Um, okay. We are going to invite uh, our friends. You can reach out to us with your arguments uh, over who <laughs> should... Because I want to give them a little more time because people are watching this on Twitch, which is where we want you to join us. But they're also getting a chance to watch it on YouTube. So if you're on either one of those two formats, I want you to go ahead and I want you to reach out to us uh, on our Twitch channel, which is the best. Please follow us there. Uh, Or go ahead and you could also reach out to us uh, on Instagram and just throw your favorite moment down. And then we're going to ask the rest of you to do your vote at the beginning of the next game. And I want to try doing this sort of back and forth just so we get our our friends that aren't able to meet us in the same time zone a chance to vote for all of you. I like that. I'll admit that. Yeah, totally. Awesome. So thank you very much, everybody. Um, uh, I hope you had fun. And I guess we will um, see you all next time. All right. Be good to each other. Yeah. Green flame. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good night. Oh.